Huntington's disease is a genetic disorder and it causes oxidative damage and a progressive breakdown of brain cells. In rat studies, the herb ashwagandha protected against the oxidative stress of the mitochondrial dysfunction, suggesting that it could be useful in diseases such as Huntington's. Astaxanthin, the algae responsible for colouring salmon, shrimps and prawns, is a powerful antioxidant and it easily crosses the blood-brain barrier. The neuroprotective properties of this molecule involve antioxidation, anti-inflammation and anti-apoptosis. This may help to protect the brain from some of the negative effects of Huntington's disease. New research published in the September issue of the Journal of Human Molecular Genetics has shown that the green tea extract epigallocatechin gallate, or EGCG, can interfere with the accumulation of proteins in the brain that causes Huntington's disease. Huntington's patients were administered a maximal daily dose of 1200 milligrams of the EGCG for 12 months, and the results were compared with a placebo. Results were measured using the unified Huntington's disease rating scale. Cognition composite score of Stroop test, verbal fluency test and symbol digit modalities test. The results showed that the EGCG improved cognition in the Huntington's disease patients. New research from the Centre for Molecular Medicine and Therapeutics at the University of British Columbia in Canada has discovered that fasting and restricting food intake to only six hours in a 24-hour period could potentially help to slow down the pace at which the disease progresses. Huntington's patients inherit a genetic mutation in the Huntington gene, and this causes production of a form of protein called MHTT. Scientists believe that this protein is largely responsible for fueling the progress of the Huntington's disease. Previous research has shown that fasting can benefit people with other progressive neurological conditions, such as MS, so the team sought to determine whether such a strategy might benefit people with Huntington's disease. The researchers came to their findings by studying mouse models of Huntington's. They restricted the rodents' access to food, so the mice were only able to eat during the same six-hour period every day and they fasted for the remaining 18 hours. The results were very encouraging. The fasting triggered a process called autophagy, in which the cells clean themselves, removing the damaged and unnecessary components. Patients who exercise tend to do better than those who don't. Huntington's patients should aim for a body mass index, or BMI, at the higher end of the healthy range, or a BMI of 24 to 26. Physotin, or strawberry extract, acts as an antioxidant. It increases glutathione. It maintains mitochondrial function in the presence of oxidative stress. It has anti-inflammatory activity against microglial cells, and it inhibits the activity of 5-lipooxygenase, signifying that physotin causes a reduction in age-related decline in brain function. The Mayo Clinic, in their first trial on women, gave 20 mg per kg body mass. For the women, that's roughly 1,500 milligrams per day. For men, a bit more is needed, because a prostate captures it so efficiently and fast that you must add additional, at least 500 milligrams or more per 100 kg mass. One way to take it is for one week each month. It can be ordered as a 50% physetin powder from America from pure bulk. Resveratrol is found naturally in small amounts in red wine and Japanese knotweed. A phase 3 clinical trial expected to include 102 patients with Huntington's disease is currently recruiting participants in France. A total of 51 patients will receive resveratrol daily for one year and the remaining 51 will receive a placebo. The primary outcome is the degree of caudate atrophy thought to be a sensitive marker of Huntington's disease. Caudate atrophy is the wasting of the caudate nucleus, a part of the brain that's affected by Huntington's. The atrophy or wasting of the caudate will be measured at the beginning and the end of the study. Secondary outcomes are a reduction in the progress of the disease, as measured by the Unified Huntington's Disease Rating Scale, 
and this measures motor control, cognitive symptoms, behavioural symptoms, independence and a person's ability to function in day-to-day -day life. Mitochondrial dysfunction has been described as an early pathological mechanism delineating the selective neurodegeneration that occurs in Huntington's disease, a polyglutamate expansion disorder that largely affects the striatum and the cerebral cortex. Cold water swimming has been shown to improve mitochondrial function. The supplement PQQ taken at 40 mg per day is one of the few things that makes the body dump old damaged mitochondria and generate new ones. The research chemical SR9009 also does this in doses from 50 to 100 mg per day sublingually. Many other supplements feed the mitochondria, such as D-ribose, the only sugar that lowers blood sugar levels instead of increasing it, and coenzyme Q10 in the form of ubiquinol, taken at 200 to 300 mg per day. This form of CoQ10 has been shown to slow the progression of Huntington's disease. For bacterial differences, a study published in the journal Neurobiology of Disease showed that male Huntington disease mice had different proportions of various bacteria compared to their healthy siblings. Intriguingly, they also ate more food but gained weight at a lower rate. As their gut became dysfunctional and excreted excess water in faecal matter, the first movement symptoms of the disease would appear. However, the researchers are unable to say at this stage whether the altered microbiome plays a role in the timing of the symptom onset. Research just published in the journal Behaviour Neuroscience provides evidence that adequate omega-3 fatty acids are needed for healthy nervous system. This could explain why low levels of omega-3s are associated with the information processing difficulties that are experienced by people with bipolar, obsessive compulsive and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, schizophrenia and Huntington's disease and other illnesses affecting the nervous system. What's more, this research suggests that increasing dietary omega-3s may be a natural way to prevent and to treat these conditions. But the most research backing it up is called VSL3. It's also known as Vivomix. It's got eight different bacterial strains and 450 billion live bacteria in each sachet. About the supplement mentioned in this video, you can find individual videos on them on my website.